Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, I want to go over some of the advanced properties of walls, sweeps, and reveals. These tools are really useful if you want to do a base or maybe a cornice that runs all along the length of your wall. So this is where actually going into the wall settings can really benefit you. So what you want to do is from the architecture tab, click the drop menu under wall. Here you can choose any type of wall you want architectural, structural, we'll cover wall by face in a later lesson. For this example though, we'll just go with architectural wall. So right now I've got a 6 and 1 8 inch partition wall. So I'm going to select edit type and duplicate this wall. The reason we're going to duplicate this wall is because if we just change the settings right here, it will change the settings of every wall of this type. So I'll click duplicate and rename this as Wall Sweeps and Reveal. Now obviously you can name yours whatever you need to. This is just an example. But be sure to name it something that you'll be able to find again, so you can use it repeatedly. Now if you click on Edit Structure, you'll actually see what makes up the 6 and 1 8 inches of this wall. You can see that it consists of two 5 8 of an inch jip board. You'll also see that we have a metal stud layer that's 3 and 5 8 inches thick. And remember, you can always edit these values by clicking into them. And then you also have another two 5 8 inches thick jip boards. And now if we hit preview, you'll actually be able to see every layer in the order in which it'll appear. Now note that we have an exterior side and an interior side. That means if we delete one of these jip boards, you'll see that it disappears on the interior side, but both are still there on the exterior side. This is useful to recognize, especially if you're working on, say, an exterior wall composition, where the interior and the exterior walls are going to be made of different materials. When you're dealing with an interior wall, however, you might have the same material on both sides. Now if we want to do a sweep or reveal, you'll notice right now that both of those categories aren't accessible. In fact, none of these categories are. This is because you can only access the Modify Vertical Structure functions in Section Preview. To access these, you have to click the Preview button, and then under View, select Section Modify Type Attributes. So now we can access these options. In order to make things a little bit easier to see, we're going to set the sample height to say 10 feet. Okay, so now we'll hit Sweeps, and once we hit Sweeps, we can add in a profile. Now you can create a custom profile that you can load in, which we'll get into later on. But for now, we're just going to add in a profile. When you click Add and look under Profile, you might not see the one you want. In that case, you're going to have to go to Load Profile. That'll bring up the Family Browser. So right now I'm in the Imperial Family. Uh, you might be working in Metric, but the process will be the same. We'll scroll down to Profiles click on Finish Carpentry since it's a wood frame construction, and we're going to just choose a base we like. I'll go with Base 1, that looks nice. And now I'll add in a top part, or a cornice. So I'll go back into Profiles, and Finish Carpentry, and we can choose whatever crown molding we prefer. So once you've selected everything, you might not see it load right away, but if you click into the profile, you can choose one. Uh, we'll go with the five and a half inch. You can also choose what type of material you want, whether a wood base or a plastic base. You can also define the distance from the base. I'm going to leave it the same, but you can adjust it if you need to for your project. You can also determine what side it is, if it has an offset, whether there's a setback, and if it's cuttable. When we hit apply, you'll actually be able to see the changes in our preview. Uh, it's a little small, I'll try zooming in. Doesn't look like I can. But you can actually add in additional wall sweeps. So in this case, I'll choose the same profile that I used before. I'll leave everything else the same, but the side will be exterior. So when I hit apply, the sweep appears on both sides. Now, those just cover the bases. If we want to add something to the top, we're going to have to add in another sweep, and this time we're going to choose the crown molding we loaded in. Now if we hit apply, you'll see that the crown molding appears at the bottom. This is because the distance is currently set from the base. If we change that to top, 
then you'll see the crown molding appears at the top. Now, one thing that you might notice is that the crown molding actually looks like it's above our wall. Now for something like this, you might actually have to lower the crown molding. So for that, let's look at the profile again. Our crown molding is three and a half inches by four and three eighths inches. So I'll go ahead and lower the crown molding by four inches. Now when we hit apply, you'll see that it actually moves up. But if we change it to negative four inches and hit apply, you can see it moves to where it belongs. Now we're going to go back in and do the same thing. We're going to add in another crown molding, and we're going to set the distance at negative four inches from the top, and we're going to make the side interior. So now we have a base and a top, both on the interior and exterior. Now again, what we've done would apply primarily to an interior wall. So now we'll hit OK until we get out of all those options. And now when I actually build something with this new component, I'll just make a simple shape and then go into 3D view. And once it loads, we can zoom in and actually see the detail of the sweep that we created. So the base and crown molding do what we wanted them to. Um, let me go ahead and set this to shaded so it loads a little faster. So now we've got our base and our top part. Now, if you want to trim around this, maybe, you know, add a reveal, you're totally able to do that. So go into Properties and click on Edit Type. Uh, we're not going to have to duplicate it this time, so just click on Edit Structure, and now we're going to add a reveal. The default profile is basically just set as a block, so you can always edit that. So for the distance, I'm going to leave it from the base, and I'm going to set it two feet from that. And when you hit apply, you'll see that it's right in the middle. So I'm also going to go in and set the offset to six inches. And when I hit apply, you can see that it actually shifts. And I'll change that to three. So now what this means is there's going to be a reveal where that box is. It'll actually cut into the wall. So if I hit OK, apply, and OK again, then you will see running along that wall a really nice, interesting looking reveal. So that's basically how you can add reveals and cornice details and interesting features that run along your wall. And we'll continue with walls in the next tutorial. See you then.